All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna make an executive decision. So um, Iggy Brasdakis, <laughs> it is December 21st, and uh, Woj reports uh, Iggy Brasdakis has gotten waived as the Knicks' final cut, meaning Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Uh, I'm I'm by the way assuming in this scenario that Jacob Evans has already gotten waived. Yes, um, meaning Michael Kidd Gilchrist gets the Knicks' last roster spot. In terms of DefCon level, I mean this would be DefCon one on Knicks Twitter. I think in my personal DEFCON level, it would be between a four and a three. I'm between a four and three because I don't think we know how good Iggy Brasdakis is. And I, if we have re- if we really believe all the bullshit that we've been um, talking for nine months now about how wonderful Leon Rose is and this regime and the process they're going through and the fact that they're not making short-sighted decisions anymore and all of the gumdrops and candy canes and rainbows. If we really buy all that, then we should be able to trust their ability to look at a guy like Brasdei because it was the 47th pick in the draft last year and be like, all right, you know what? He's just, it's like, it's, it's not, we don't see enough there. Um, so I'm going to go DEFCON 4. I was well. First, I'll say Bernard, cover your ears. Oh yeah, Bernard um, doesn't want to. Don't he's say probably it. just just fast forwarding this conversation. <laughs> um, I was going to say DefCon Five, and I think you kind of reeled me back into a four. Zach Lowe talked about this last week, where there's this idea of fans who love these end of bench players. Chris Dunn, you're talking about, yeah. Rave about or Shaq them. Harrison, and, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yes, and how they don't want to see them go and it's like did you see what this guy did and the reality is in the grand scheme of things it doesn't matter like i think back to that whole summer where and i was part of this too we were arguing about whether troy williams was an nba player or not oh oh, i was all aboard that train and it's like yeah exactly right and this idea of okay well he you know he's a three and d um depth piece he could be at least like an eighth or ninth guy and he's not it's just not who he is and we try to put as much hope in everyone on our roster because we just do. We tie in everything. Our hopes and dreams are, excuse me, tied to these 15 players who make the roster and we hope for the best for them. And for Iggy, you know, I think there's something for him to prove, I guess is the sort of thing where if he's not seen as a long-term piece, cutting him and bring in Michael Kikokas would not be something I love. Really? I'd say I probably wouldn't want it to happen, but the reality is that Michael K. Gilchrist is also very relationship oriented with Wes, William Wes, uh, Wesley. And, and he was a second overall pick. That doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to amount to anything much better than what Brasdakis could be. But that type of pedigree and the fact that it is a relationship business leads me to believe that this is no longer Steve Mills and Scott Perry's team. Brasdakis is there you know, he was there for Perry and he was there because of RJ Barrett and they knew each other. A little bit of silver lining, right? What in terms of, if you're someone who's not a big Scott Perry fan, if they do wave Russ Dacus, there's your, there's your silver lining. That's a good point. I hadn't considered that. Um, Um, I I do just want to, sorry, finish up what you're saying. No, it's, it's more that I'd love to see what he has, but I'd also love to spend that time because there's only so much playing time that's available um, going towards maybe a guy like Kevin Knox instead, someone who, you can either have him as a player long-term or you can up Knox's trade value to the point where you've got, you know, a, a great deal amount of cap space. You can trade for someone mid season if you wanted to, or in the off season and you could use Kevin Knox in some way. And that time that you would have spent trying to get Brasdakis going, you have something different there. So I don't view him as a priority. If he's kept, that's great. I could see him maybe being traded to another team, um, maybe the Knicks take on, like if they traded Jacob Evans and Brasdakis to another team for um, one they, player instead that clears up a roster spot yeah, and but then they're not a little getting... bit more money back and a second round pick, something. Who knows? But I'm not going to lose sleep if Brasdakis isn't here. Yeah. I'd love to see him get an opportunity, but it, it doesn't matter to me. Here's the only thing I will say. Um, and it doesn't always, you know, I'm, the organizations that did these things that I'm about to say are maybe not aren't the smartest, but um, Christian Wood once upon a time was, I think he was cut if, or he was whatever, unceremoniously dispatched of by some team, Joe Harris, unceremoniously, unceremoniously dispatched of by some team. Um, these guys made 
lots of money this summer. I mean, I'm just picking up sure. re- but recent then, examples. But they are the exception. They the are rule. Think 1, about how many thousand, second round guys never a, get a thousand percent. Anything. Yeah, no, they are the exception. But at the same time, you know, the the stink of the Damian Dotson situation is still, I think, fresh. And like, you know, look, nobody a lot of people don't like when I like act like Zach Lowe is, is what he says is gospel. But I like, I know how much hours of tape that guy watches. And when he takes the time to point out the fact that like, I don't get why Damian Dotson never got a shot in New York. That dude could do some stuff, which he tweeted out the moment he signed with the Cavs for a very fair contract. Like it, it does make me at least wonder, like, are we, have we, have we crossed the, the minimum threshold of, of internal talent evaluation here? Um, I, you know, it was interesting what Berman said last week. Would it, uh, Oh, Dotson. about Dotson. Yeah. And no, I, it's yeah. It, I mean, look, these looks it, when you're a shitty organization, these, these types of questions will, li- will linger until you are no longer a shitty organization.